Starting a business can be intimidating. If you watch enough TV or YouTube on the topic of starting a business, you'll start to believe that you need to identify as an entrepreneur, be willing to risk everything, and have the desire to be the next Elon Musk and build a billion dollar company. But Jason Fried, author of the book Rework and founder of the software company Basecamp, says the hype around entrepreneurship and startups is all nonsense. Starting a business doesn't need to be intimidating. If you want to start a business, you don't need to self-identify as an entrepreneur, and you don't need to have the desire to build a billion-dollar empire. In fact, it's awesome to just want a small side business that supplements your income. A small but profitable and sustainable business is a great accomplishment. And the path to building a profitable and sustainable business is simpler than you think. The book Rework offers a refreshing approach to business that author Jason Fried and his team at Basecamp have validated after nearly two decades of running their software business. I wish I had read the book Rework when I started my business, but now that I've finally read the book, I've developed a mantra that I will use to simplify the start of my next business venture. The mantra goes like this, solve your problem with less and then pick a fight. This mantra might seem a little wacky, but let me explain each part of it. First, solve your problem. When Vic Firth was playing drums for the Boston Symphony Orchestra, he got frustrated by the quality of the drumsticks he was using. No two drumsticks seemed to have the same weight or produce the same sound. So he went into his basement and started making his own drumsticks. These sticks had the same weight, the same density, and the same pitch. He called them the perfect pair. Years later, Firth now has a 62% share of the drumstick market. When Bill Bowerman was a track coach at the University of Oregon, he was looking for a lighter, higher quality running shoe for his athletes. He couldn't find any, so he went to a local workshop and started pouring rubber into a waffle iron and created his own shoes. Years later, Nike was born. Author Jason Fried and his team at Basecamp have developed software applications for project managers. Each of their products was born out of a simple question. Is this something we need and want to use? Before Basecamp, Jason Fried and his co-founders had careers where they needed to manage several projects. They couldn't find a good application for doing so, so they built their own. Fried says, there was no need for focus groups, market studies, or middlemen. We had an itch, so we scratched it. If you make a product or service to solve one of your problems, you immediately know if you're doing a good job or not. Jason says, if you build a business based on solving someone else's problem, you're constantly stabbing in the dark. When you solve your own problem, the light comes on. You know exactly what the right answer is. Solving your own problem allows you to make decisions faster and more effectively. During the early stages of starting a business, decisions are progress. Each one of them is like a brick in your foundation. Now you might think to solve your problem, you need lots of resources, but you need less than you think. When Basecamp was building their first software application, they did it on a shoestring budget and in far less time than they had originally planned. They shared office space with another company. They bought one server, just enough server space to support the launch for a few months. They didn't hire customer support. The owners answered every customer email. Heck, they didn't even have the ability to bill customers until 30 days after they launched their product. Since they build in monthly cycles, they knew they would have 30 days to figure out the billing software, so they focused on more urgent problems. There are so many things that aspiring business owners think they need to start a business. Most of it fits in the category of nice to have or should have, not must have. Sure, it would be nice to have an MBA or be the expert in your industry. But what if you just made sure you had access to Google and a handful of trusted resources that you could lean on to solve problems along the way? It would be nice to quit your job to have enough time to work on your idea. But what if you just started waking up an hour earlier or going to bed an hour later or working on your idea when everyone else was watching TV? Sure, it would be nice to have outside investment or a healthy reserve of cash. But what if you did everything on the cheap for now? You work from home. You use your apartment as a temporary warehouse. You built an online store before building a brick and mortar. You built your own website with cheap software instead of hiring an expensive web developer. And it would be nice to have a fancy business plan. But what if instead of building a business plan, you use that time to solve your problem, build a product, and sell it to at least 10 people? The point is you need less than you think to get a business started. In fact, after this video, take out a piece of paper and write down everything you think you need to launch a successful business what resources you need, what equipment, what expertise. Then go down the list, look at each item and ask, do I really need this to get started? Could I get started with less? 
Now, as you're solving your problem with less than you thought you needed, you need to ask yourself, once I solve my problem and build my solution, how will I stand out in the marketplace? The answer, pick a fight. Dunkin' Donuts, a coffee shop in the United States, positions itself as the anti-Starbucks. They go out of their way to say how un-Starbucks they are. They pride themselves on not having fancy names for cup sizes, like Venti and Grande. They even had a website called DuncanBeatStarbucks.com, where visitors could send e-cards with messages like, Friends don't let friends drink Starbucks. Audi, the luxury car manufacturer, positions itself as the anti-old luxury car company. It goes out of its way to mock brands like Lexus and Mercedes. Recently, I saw an Audi commercial that showed a guy being briefed about how his new life in witness protection would be. Agents tell him that it's important that he can't be recognized, and they show him a picture of the car he'll need to drive. He looks down and sees a Lexus SUV. The man says, I'll take my chances, and then drives off in his Audi. Dunkin' Donuts and Audi purposely pick fights with their old mainstream competitors to be seen as the fresh alternative. Jason Fried says being the anti-fill-in-the-blank is a great way to differentiate yourself and attract followers. People get stoked by conflict. They take sides. However, since in the last part, it was recommended that you start building a product cheaply, you might think it's hard to one-up the competition. So don't. Instead, one-down them. I recently went to a coffee shop in New York City that had four options. Hot coffee, cold coffee, espresso, and espresso with milk. Their minimalist approach was their way of being the anti-mainstream coffee shop. They offered less, but did it better. Their cold coffee was one of the best I've ever had, and I'm definitely going back. The strategy is to see what mainstream solutions have to offer, then decide what few things you want to do really well, and purposely ignore offering anything else. I've tried to apply this strategy to this channel. I attempt to offer better book summaries by offering less. I don't do the whole book. I take the time to distill a summary into a core message of three or four items, and many of you have told me that you like it that way. By offering less, you force yourself to leave out features or options that some people might like. This can be difficult to do, but doing so reveals your core values, which gives character to your solution and allows it to stand out even more in the marketplace. In the end, by finding one of your problems to solve, solving it with less, and then having the courage to pick a fight and one downing your competition, you have a pretty damn good chance of starting a profitable and sustainable business that you can be proud of. That was the core message that I gathered from Rework by Jason Fried. It's filled with fun, counterintuitive business knowledge. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. Thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.